Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, spe- speaking of this, when that month in Thailand, um, so I spent a lot of time at the beach, and, and I had such a suntan that at one point someone asked me if I was if I was Thai um, because oh, wow. because I was so dark, <laughs> and they they said to me, "Are you Thai?" And uh, I was like, "No." Uh, but yeah, I had a result. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I managed to blend in there as That's well in the end, and so then I got less strange <laughs> wow. looks after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow, that's a, that's a successful tan, mm. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you can blend in in Thailand. I think I was, again, being 19, thinking, like, the more tanned I am, maybe the more sexy I am. <laughs> but, uh... Okay, welcome back to the Clark and Miller English Podcast. And if this is your first time, then welcome. It's good to have you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, we've got quite a few newbies. Newbies? New guys? Um, because um, I interviewed Luke from Luke's English Podcast um, last episode. And um, yeah, I think we've got some of Luke's friends here. Some lepers, he calls them. Um, So yeah, good to have you all here. And yeah, today um, I'm going to talk to Martin Johnston, uh, who uh, runs Rock and Roll English, another English podcast, about his book, uh, English on the Toilet. Fantastic name, isn't it? And um, yeah, he's going to read a story. So this uh, this episode is actually like a kind of listening exercise. Um, you're going to hear some true or false statements. Then Martin's going to read the story. And uh, then you'll hear the true or false statements again. Take your time and uh, try to try to answer them. It's uh, quite simple, really. It's a true and false exercise. After that, um, Martin and I talk about uh, the interesting vocabulary in the episode. Now, before we get started, it's very, very, very important for me to tell you that there will be a lot of swearing in this episode. Uh, Martin's thing is uh, he's very into real life English with the way people always, the way people speak it, and it's yeah. Sometimes people swear. It's just a part of life, part of language, and um, yeah. So we, we were actually going to discuss <laughs> uh, quite a lot of swearing in this. Um, there will be uh, no drugs, but sex and rock and roll from the sex, drugs, and rock and roll um, thing. So yeah, if you if you're at work or if you're listening with young family members or if you're planning to use this for your um, young learners class, I would say don't. Um, Just wait for the next one. Most of our episodes are nice and squeaky clean. Today is a not safe for work episode. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Um, Yeah, and we'll just get going. Uh, Enjoy it. I have a chat with Martin, then we get into the true and false stuff, and then we hear the story, then we get the true and false stuff again, and finally we get the... um, talking about the vocabulary so uh, yeah enjoy it and I hope you get a lot out of it there's some fantastic vocabulary in this episode cool on with the episode bing all right hello okay I'm sitting here with Martin Uh, hey Martin how's it going good how are you Gabriel (laughs) I'm good I'm good um, nice sunny but not too hot day here in Bristol, which is where I'm sitting at the moment. Right, yeah. You're I, you're in a much hotter place, right? I'm in Sicily, and not only am I in Sicily, but I am also in my recording studio, which is part of the utility room, which has no windows um, and is a very small, stuffy room. Um, so probably the hottest place in Sicily is where I am. <laughs> wow okay i'm not going to ask you the temperature because it, it might just hurt just to listen yeah. to listen to the number yeah cool great um so yeah martin is um in charge of a couple of sort of interesting projects out there uh your main thing is the you have a podcast called rock and roll english is that right Correct. yes yeah tell us Tell us about that, because we're going to also talk about your book. But um, tell me about Rock and Roll English. Tell us about what led you to like um, come up with it. Why did you go down that sort of road? Because it's kind of different from a lot of other podcasts, I think. It's, it's, got, a, it's got an edge. Um, yeah. So, well, first of all, I love podcasts. And like I've been listening to podcasts. I think the first first like 
first I heard of podcasts was about 2006 and Ricky Gervais, uh, an English comedian, had one. Well, it's, it's actually a CD and you had to buy the CD and then listen on, put it on your iPod. Um, and so I was doing it then. And then, so in like 2010, I started teaching English. And um, I was also, that's also when I started learning Italian and I started listening to a few podcasts in Italian to help me. And I just thought they were all so so bloody boring basically <laughs> um mm-hmm. just you know like how to order an ice cream and like even when i got to a higher level like the conversations were just so so boring um and i kind mm-hmm. of thought well i would love to just listen to just like a couple of friends having a laugh just like a normal conversation that you'd have with a friend mm-hmm. in a pub um and then i thought mm-hmm. right well i can do that um and so yeah, I had the idea and then for ages I was too scared to put the podcast out because it's kind of like, oh my God, it's in the public eye. Like I can't, I can't do this. So I sort of like mulled over it for about like a year, maybe longer. Finally put the first one out. I think I, I think I got about 20 downloads from like students and close family. Um, Good start. And then at the end, <laughs> people seem to enjoy it. And then, so yeah, just just kept going with it. Now I think I've done two hundred and thirty-five mm-hmm. episodes now. Yeah, that's loads. <laughs> that's tons. Yeah. And yeah, I like I like what you were saying that you know, is a lot. So when you're learning like a language through like an audio course or even a course book, very often you end up like inhabiting a world of um, people being very nice and polite mm. all the time, um, because these course books they want to sell. And they they can't they can't really feature, well, sex, drugs, rock and roll, swearing, yeah, of course, uh, because you know they they can't sell yeah. if they do that. I suppose that's for their reason. Even though um, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, that's all kind of a big part of a lot of people's lives. It, exactly. <laughs> so, um, and listening yeah. to like the scripted actors, um, mm. like having, like. Uh, what what they say a real conversation but it's obviously all scripted and it just doesn't it's just not just sounds weird whilst mm. real conversations are, are actually different to that there's lots of like stuttering and interrupting each other and all the rest mm-hmm. of it yeah and people going uh-huh uh-huh yeah. uh-huh all the time yeah yeah it's true i guess it's really difficult to make something sound authentic mm-hmm. um so yeah, so that's what you do, and you talk about pretty much anything, don't you, on your podcast? Like any topic is is pretty much y- yeah. I mean, open. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think we've covered pretty much everything in two hundred and thirty five <laughs> episodes. Um, like, and one of the big things is sort of like telling funny stories about like real life stories from my life or my friends, things that have mm-hmm. happened like in the past because the friends I have on the podcast uh, with some of them we've actually been friends for 31 years so obviously lots of stories from when we were kids lots of stupid mm-hmm. things um mm-hmm. so yeah we we like to um talk about them like embarrassing stories i always think you can always bond with someone if they tell you an embarrassing story if i if i tell you for example oh i've got a great story i I bought a Ferrari the other day and like I'm so rich. Then you kind of think, oh, this person's a horrible person. I would never want to talk with this person. But if I tell you something mm. stupid that happened to me, that kind of, I think, makes that person seem vulnerable and you kind of like feel something for that person because you think, oh, mm-hmm. I've been in that situation where, yeah. like, for example, in Italy, one of the things I've mentioned many, many times is you have to give people kisses when you say hello like two kisses and sometimes it's one and you think well what do i do like and you go to give a second kiss and they're already talking to someone else and you're just kissing the air um so like (laughs) these kind of things that happen on a daily basis to everyone that Mm. often that like Mm -hmm. don't get spoken about in public like you speak about it with your friends maybe in the pub something like that so i I wanted to do something that's like that basically yeah so yeah, like bringing out the human side of, exactly. of just everyday living. And everyday English is like a kind of cliche. Everyone uses mm. that phrase, but it really is. When you're talking about stupid little things like that, as like silly as they are, that's about as everyday as yeah, you get. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. So so that yeah. was my plan, to give people something to listen to that they can just enjoy as well. Because um, like I said, when like I was 
I remember when I was living, well, I was living in Essex just outside of London and traveling to London to go to work. And I would always mm-hmm. be listening to podcasts and you, you always want something that's kind of entertaining, like, because, you know, you often go into a job you don't like. So I kind of thought, well, I want to give something that people can just enjoy instead of thinking. Yeah. Um, especially with language, because often when I was listening to those Italian podcasts, I was kind of forcing myself thinking, right, I really need to try and work on my Italian. So I'm going to have to force myself to listen to this instead of it being something fun that I was looking forward to. Mm hmm. Yeah, it, fun is key, yeah. isn't it? And uh, yeah, hearing people talk about themselves doing something stupid is always fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you said, the, the so, embarrassing yeah. stuff. No one wants to hear about the good stuff, like how yeah. wonderful you are. No one cares. Um, yeah, so I did a job interview and it went well. Yeah. It's not a story. Exactly. <laughs> I did a job interview and it went really well and now I get loads of money in my new job. Like, who cares? Yeah. Brilliant. Mm. <laughs> cool. So that's great. That's rock and roll English. Um, but also you got this book, um, English on the Toilet. Mm. Uh, so... It's an excellent name because immediately you're you're you know that it's going to basically not be very scripted or very um, artificial. Yeah, tell us about English on the toilet and why is it called English on the toilet? Um, well, I mean, I do talk about going to the toilet quite a lot on the podcast, but the the main reason <laughs> is because um, I'm someone that every time I go to the toilet now, obviously with smartphones, I often sit there and read and like read articles and often spend much longer on the toilet than I actually need to because I'm reading stuff. And so I kind of thought like short stories that people could read like on the toilet. Um that that was the idea to like exactly that something short enough that people That's really could read cool cuz toilet. I'm always recommending my students and my readers and my listeners to um have like some sort of English book in their toilet. So mm. when they're sitting on okay. the toilet they can just start reading you know there's nothing to not much to do in yeah. there so you can you, you've got something to read i mean i do that i've got like my bulgarian asterisk in there and i try okay. to get like a few frames in mm. um yeah no I, that's great so this is actually a book you can actually have in your toilet that is designed specifically for that uh, that yes exactly <laughs> i mean also for like i think all english teachers say like to use the the dead time i think it's known as like when you're waiting for the bus or stuff like that um, and I think the the best, the biggest dead time, let's call it, is when you're on the toilet. So I, I went yeah. for that. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. It's great. It's a book of short stories, but it's not just um, short stories. It's uh, there's um, some comprehension questions, mm. usually true. Or, they're always true or false, right? True or false I questions. So see, I wasn't even sure to add yeah. them. Um, I just saw other people did. That's a great thought, idea. OK, I'll add them. And then I actually added them at the end of the book. And then other people told me, why did you do that? Because now I have to go to check. I have to go to the back, like the end of the book and then back to the story. So, yeah, it wasn't mm-hmm. so well thought out. But, uh, yeah, there are some comprehension questions. OK, yeah, um, I think it's good. I mean, wherever they are, you're, um, you know, you read something in, in, a, in English and then you can reflect on mm. it and think about what you were reading and maybe even go back to check. Mm. This is good. This is all very good way of like engaging mm. with like la- the language um, while on the toilet. Also at the end of each story, you've got um, the vocabulary section. Yep. So there's lots of like vocabulary um, stuff. And this is where it gets fun because I know I've already said this at the beginning of the podcast, which is going, which I'm going to record later because that's how things, these things work. Um, the bit when I'm just warning everyone that, yeah, there's going to be lots of swearing. There's going to be talk of sex. There's no drugs in this one, okay, but um, yeah, uh, sexy stuff and sweary stuff. So if you're, I know we've got a bunch of some of our, some of our listeners are teachers and they, they use our stuff with their kids. So okay. <laughs> young learners, this is this one is don't do it with this one. OK, yeah, <laughs> this is this has got the red flag. Um, good. OK, I'm just uh, shouting out one more time to the listeners. Good. Now we can move on. So we're going to um, listen to you talk, uh, listen to you read the first one of the stories okay. from from English on the toilet. And what we do, I think what we can do. I'm going to read the comprehension questions first. Okay. So. 
I'm going to read the questions. Everyone, you'll hear you'll hear a gap after each question. It's not a question; it's a true or false statement. Um, just so you can think about these different true or false statements, we're going to listen to Martin read the story, bring it to life, and then we'll have the questions again. So, yeah, if you're listening and ready to do this,、uh, get ready. We're going to hear the questions, and then we're going to hear the story. Right. Okay. You're ready, Martin. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready.、Uh, so I'm going to start. I'm going to read the true or false questions, and then we'll get on with the story. Okay. Okay. Here we go. True or false comprehension questions. Okay. True or false. One. Martin and Boom Boom did a lot of research about their trip before leaving. True or false. Martin number two. Martin and Boom Boom expected something similar to places they had been before. True or false. Number three. The hotel that they stayed in was expensive. True or false? Number four. The first bar was how they expected it to be from the outside. True or false? Number five. They had a drink in the first bar because they didn't want to seem impolite. True or false? Number six. They did not feel safe in the bar. True or false? Number seven. They believed that the taxi driver had problems with English. True or false? Number eight. They thought the last place would be good. True or false? Number nine. They enjoyed the massage. True or false? Number ten. The man was enjoying having sex with the woman. We you know what's. Yeah, what's going on, right? What kind of story is this going to be? True or false? Number eleven. Martin and Boom Boom were rude to the taxi driver at the end. Okay, so all we know so far that there's some beers, there's being polite, there's some bars,、um, there's a man having sex with a woman, and there's a massage. So we've already got a clear idea what kind of story this is going to be. Yeah, let's hear it.、Um, Should we go for okay, it? Okay, I just want to mention to the listeners, as I have already mentioned to <laughs> Gabriel, that I'm terrible at reading out loud. Okay, number one, so I'll do my best.、Um, and number two, I haven't read this story like basically since I wrote it, which was many years <laughs> ago.、Um, So yeah, it's going to be it's going to be exciting for me as well.、Um, maybe I should just mention this was when I went to Thailand in two thousand and four with one of my friends who's on the podcast, Boom Boom Cannon,、um, and yeah, so we were nineteen at the time. So yes,、mm-hmm. I'll start. So the story is called, and the title obviously, I'll have a beer and a wife, please. Okay, <laughs> so here we go. Most men probably think that watching a sex show would be a great experience. Well, let me tell you, that was not my experience. In fact, it was one of the worst experiences of my life. I was in Thailand with my friend Boom Boom. We were only nineteen and had made the very intelligent decision to go to Thailand because a friend at work told me it was good. This was enough for us to fly to the other side of the world. Did we read anything before? Any travel guides? Did we fuck? In our defence, this was before Wikipedia and broadband internet existed, so it was a little bit more difficult. Still, we were idiots. We thought we've been to Spain before. We've even been to Italy. How different can it be? The answer: different, very different. We were very tired when we landed because the flight from London was twelve hours long. Plus, there was the time difference, so we were a bit jet lagged. Our tiredness soon went away when we arrived at the hotel, though, as it was absolutely amazing—a five-star hotel in Bangkok on the thirty-second floor with a fantastic view of all the city. This is the type of place celebrities stay. We said it was quite a lot for a couple of nineteen-year-olds from a small town in England. We had booked the hotel at home. The plan was to stay in Bangkok for a few nights. Then move south to the tropical islands. We paid the enormous sum of ten pound a night for this hotel, and this remains the best ten pound I have ever spent in my life. And this also remains the only time I have stayed in a five-star hotel in my life. As we were young and stupid, even though it was very late and we were tired, we said, "Let's get changed and go out." 
after a shower and putting on some aftershave for the women, we went downstairs, got in a taxi and said, we want to go out. Where do you want to go? The taxi driver asked. We don't know, we replied. We didn't know where to go. Just take us out. I think at this point, the taxi thought he had won the lottery. He was probably thinking, two young, stupid British tourists. Perfect. <laughs> so he said, OK, I know a great place to take you. We arrived at the first bar. It looked very quiet from outside. We were expecting something like we had seen in Spain. A street full of bars with people going in and out. Never mind, it must be different here, we thought. Here you go, boys, the taxi driver said. I will wait for you here. Go in and have fun. What a nice taxi driver, we said. It's very kind of him to wait for us. We walked into the bar and there was silence. Utter silence. On the flip side, though, there were a lot of girls. However, they looked a bit strange. They were all Thai, which was fine, but we were expecting to see at least one other tourist and they weren't wearing many clothes. In fact, I think semi-naked would be an exaggeration. It was a very strange atmosphere and we were starting to worry a little bit. What shall we do? I whispered to Boom Boom. We can't just walk out. It will look rude, he said. Let's just have one drink and go. It sounded like a good plan. So we walked up to the bar and said, two beers, please, barman. OK, and what woman do you want? He replied. Sorry, what? Did we hear that right? We both looked at each other in a confused way. Neither of us understood what was going on. What do you mean? We asked curiously. What girl do you want to take home? He repeated. We still didn't really understand what was going on. You can have her for a night, a week, a month, a year, or you can marry her. The barman is giving us the possibility to marry one of these girls, we thought. Is this normal? I'll do you a good price, he said. OK, so now it was finally clear. The girls were prostitutes and the barman was their pimp. We wanted to run out of the door, but suddenly we realised we were in quite a dangerous situation. So we said... Uh, no thanks. We don't want a wife. Just the beers, please. As he poured the drinks, the silence was getting worse and worse. We could also feel the girls looking at us. He gave us the beers and then we went and sat down at an empty table. The girls stared at us the whole time. Normally, having girls looking at you is a good thing, but this didn't feel so good. The barman came over. Are you sure you don't want a girl? He asked. Even for one night? No, no, we're fine, thanks, we responded. We drank the beers extremely quickly and left. Our very kind taxi driver was there waiting for us. Did you have fun, boys? He asked with a smile on his face. Uh, not really, we said. Can you take us to a different place where people are drinking and dancing? Oh, OK, he said. Sorry, I didn't understand. I know the perfect place. He took us to another pub. Exactly the same story. Every detail, exactly the same. The only difference was that we understood immediately what was going on. Here we go again, we thought. But like last time, we didn't want to be rude, so we drank our drinks and left. Our lovely taxi driver was waiting for us again. It was time to be clear now. No, Mr. Taxi Driver, we are not interested in having sex with prostitutes, we said. Please take <laughs> us to a place where people are dancing and drinking and there are other tourists. Oh, OK, I'm sorry, he said. My English is not so good and sometimes I don't understand. Poor Taxi Driver, we thought. He just misunderstood us. Maybe we were talking too fast. I know another place for you, he said. It's perfect. OK, thank you, we responded in slow words. So he brought us to another place. This place definitely looked different. People were queuing to get in. It must be good, we thought. There were no other tourists, but that was OK. We wanted to soak up some of the local culture. We waited in the queue, then asked how much it was to get in. It cost 700 bar, which was about £10 at the time. That's what we paid to get in nightclubs at home. So we thought, OK, obviously the prices are the same in Thailand as they are in England. 
We paid our money, walked in, and noticed it seemed like a little theatre. There was a small stage in the middle and seats around it. Are we watching a play? We thought to ourselves. This wasn't really what we had in mind, but never mind. The waitress accompanied us to our seats, front row seats. We started looking around and noticed we were getting some strange looks from the other people in the theatre. The feeling we had in the previous two bars was starting to slowly come back. Two middle-aged women then came and stood behind us. They seemed strange, but it soon got much stranger. They started to massage our shoulders. Oh God, (laughs) we thought, what can we do now? We didn't want to be touched by middle-aged women. But is it okay to tell someone to stop massaging you in this place? We thought to ourselves. We didn't know. We were in a foreign country where we didn't know anything about the culture. Maybe they were just being friendly. So we thought, let's just grin and bear it. But just when we thought the situation couldn't get any worse, it got a lot worse. A man and a woman got on the stage, which was about three metres in front of us, So we had a great view. What's going to happen, we thought. The man took off his clothes. All his clothes. The woman (laughs) took off her clothes. All her clothes. So we were now looking at two naked Thai people. Please God help us, we thought. Then they started having sex. That's right. Full sex directly in front of us. (laughs) Oh, fuck, we thought. (laughs) It was absolutely disgusting. It was the most unerotic act of love I have ever seen. I will never forget the look on the man's face while they were going at it. It was like a stone. Absolutely zero emotion. So there we were sitting and watching two complete strangers having sex directly in front of us whilst two elderly aged women were massaging our shoulders. Let's just say this is not what we were expecting from our first night in Thailand. We quickly finished our beers again and started to leave. Don't you want to stay with us? The middle-aged women said. Uh, no thanks. We walked out of the door and found our kind taxi driver waiting for us like usual. Did you have fun, boys? He asked again. We had lost our patience now. Fuck off, we shouted. We don't want your help anymore. (laughs) At this point, we were walking down the street in Bangkok, completely lost. We had no idea where we were or how to get back to the hotel. We were just walking down the street, heads down, complete silence. I then looked up and saw an elephant walking down the street. So it was just a normal evening of (laughs) pimps, prostitutes, massages, sex shows and an elephant. Shall we take the first flight back to London tomorrow morning? I asked Boom Boom. Good idea he responded nice um yeah and it's also i guess worth mentioning the extra information because you didn't you didn't leave after after that uh, perilous evening yeah um I, yeah okay you, i can read do you extra, read the extra yeah bit? i'll read the extra information about the story so we didn't fly back to london after this first terrible night we understood how things worked in the city then we had a great time We went down to the islands a couple of days later and had the best holiday of our lives. I would also like to say that Thai people were very nice to us during the trip and we really enjoyed speaking to them. We just found the not so nice people that night. These people exist in every country in the world, including my country, which is definitely true. That's definitely true. Mm. Yeah. No, I mean, there are just not so nice people everywhere and there are lots of nice people everywhere too. (laughs) <laughs> this is one of those exactly. things. Exactly. Wow, that was that was yeah, an experience yeah. reliving that because, like I said, yeah, that how did it, memory? How did it feel? Yeah, it was strange um, because I hadn't really thought about that in a while, and especially mm. the memory of the man, as I mentioned, as I so eloquently put it in the book of going at it, um, going at it. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> with that memory, zero emotion. Yeah, that is still very clear <laughs> in my mind. Yeah, although it was seventeen oh, c- years ago, is still very clear. It's it's burned into your 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 brain yes. forever. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, when when you die, it's going to be the last thing you think of. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think so. Yeah. 
<laughs> Sorry, that was a bit morbid, but I just like, no. I, just, I think it will be just it, it being was, on my deathbed. It, death such, it really was a... such a crazy, <laughs> crazy experience. And something I didn't mention there mm. in the book. Mm-hmm. So because we stayed in Bangkok, I think for three nights, and the next two nights we were literally too scared to go out because of the experience. So we just stayed. Oh, no. in, so we just basically stayed in our like amazing five star hotel. There were like pool tables, swimming pools. So we thought, why go out and and do all that again? Let's just stay here. Actually, yeah, I guess that's the thing, right? You are on holiday. You can do what you want, and um, you don't get to stay in a five star hotel very often. Yeah. So um, yeah, take advantage. So and and then we went down to the islands. But then when we came back, I think we had another two or three nights in Bangkok. And then we had spoken to lots of people about bangkok and they told us where to go and then we had a great time mm-hmm. but yeah the cool. first time like i said it's just because we didn't know anything about where we were going yeah i was just wondering because you know you must have known that bangkok had a reputation for this kind we, of thing right so this is the thing we were so young stupid and naive mm-hmm. that we didn't even mm-hmm. know that we, wow. we didn't know literally anything um, i mean we'd only probably been abroad a couple of times like i said like spain Mm -hmm. italy like a few times in our lives um we're like from like a (laughs) a fairly small town um outside of london um so yeah we were just yeah just a definition of young stupid and very very naive naive is a word that springs out a lot in this story yeah very very naive um but yeah no no more naive than any of us were when we were 19 Mm. i mean yeah i think i think it's safe to say we were all pretty uh pretty dumb at that age (laughs) Mm. because um like i mentioned in the story like the internet obviously existed but it wasn't Mm -hmm kind of like now where i don't know like yeah 2004 people didn't really i mean maybe just like me and my group of friends but like just like googling something i mean when did google actually even start like google was around then but it wasn't very new and most people were still using like yeah yeah exactly and it was always like very slow and um like yeah there's certainly the verb didn't express it didn't exist to google something did it because Mm -hmm. uh right yeah um yeah so so like back we literally just didn't do anything yeah back then i just remember like searching on the internet you're kind of you really needed to know what you were looking for yeah definitely when you went online uh, otherwise you wouldn't find anything yeah yeah um well it's a bit more of a it's a real mess wh- whilst yeah. now if you had a 19 year old they could easily just go on and google it um whilst yeah. like you said like them maybe if I, I even tried i don't know but it was just so difficult to find anything on the internet and it was you might take have found so long. like at some random guy's blog yeah. or something but you wouldn't know whether to trust it or yeah. not anyway and yeah. just even like load in the computer and then like, like <laughs> it just used to take so long that you just used to think sod it have to wait for your mum to finish playing solitaire yeah. so you can use the computer exactly <laughs> or, or for your brother to get off the phone so you can use the internet exactly <laughs> um, those were the days so yeah yeah great story classic uh classic kind of coming of age mm. sort of story in a way yeah in a sort of um and uh, strange l- way like i said it, it still remains the greatest trip i've ever been on just because i don't think anything could surprise me like that again like i, I think mm. i could go anywhere now like obviously there are so many places in the world i haven't been to but i just don't think i could ever go somewhere w- without not knowing anything before even if i went to like mm-hmm. A, some kind of jungle somewhere i don't know like and stayed with like a local tribe or something like i would do research and i would know what i was uh, mm-hmm. in for whilst yeah here i didn't well, it's yeah you're right it's kind of like unthinkable now yeah. to go somewhere without researching exactly but back then it was kind of normal yeah you just go exactly i remember i did the same thing it's not quite as uh exotic but yeah i was about i guess i was about 19 too and i just went to amsterdam without knowing anything Mm. i just went there and i had money and i just decided to go to amsterdam (laughs) and stay there for a few weeks knowing nothing yeah at all nothing (laughs) about the place it was just normal yeah yeah great so yeah let's uh get those true and false statements in again um so you heard the story uh a fateful evening in bangkok um here are the true or false comprehension questions can you answer them true or false number one martin and boom boom did a lot of research about their trip before leaving 
That should be easy to answer considering the conversation we just had. Um, <laughs> true or false number two. Martin and Boom Boom expected something similar to places they had been before. True or false number three. The hotel that they stayed in was expensive. True or false number four. The first bar was how they expected it to be from the outside. True or false number five. They had a drink in the first bar because they didn't want to seem impolite. True or false number six. They did not feel safe in the bar. True or false number seven. They believed that the taxi driver had problems with English. True or false. Uh, true. True or. It's really difficult to say after a while. True or false. True or false. <laughs> number eight. They thought the last place would be good. True or false. Number nine. They enjoyed the massage. True or false number 10, the man was enjoying having sex with the woman. True or false number 11, Martin and Boom Boom were rude to the taxi driver at the end. Okay, that should be much easier to answer now you've heard the story. Let's uh, move on. Uh, so let's talk about the vocabulary because there's there's some great vocab mm. in this and you've highlighted it. In your book, you know, you 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 highlight interesting phrases and you define them at the end. So... Um, at the, I'm going to, I want to give these in context, actually. So, like, I want to get to the beginning of the story. Can I actually find it? And, uh, the first phrase is, uh, did we fuck? Now, that isn't a question saying, asking the reader whether we <laughs> fucked or not. <laughs> it's, it's a different sort of phrase. Um, so, yeah, in the context, uh, in the book, you, you said, did we read anything before? Any travel guides? Did we fuck? So, <laughs> yeah. what does that mean? Um, well, I'm trying to think how I actually defined it here. So I wrote, when you are asked a yes, no question, the answer is a strong no. Um, you can respond, do, did, plus subject, plus fuck. So, um, did I fuck? Did we fuck? Um, mm. Did he fuck? So, like, a very yeah. strong, resounding no. Yeah. Yeah. And it's um yeah, I like that. Strong no. Mm. That's like that's definitely a resounding no. Yeah. Um it also works with other auxiliaries as well, you know, like what was Samantha at the meeting? Was she fuck? Yeah, it does. I hadn't, <laughs> like, I hadn't actually thought of that. Like, do you think he would do that? Would he fuck? Yeah. Um Yeah, good modals. Yeah. Look, Can he swim? Can he fuck? Yeah. Um, well, I, <laughs> I often think about English, especially the word fuck. There's so many uses of that mm. uh, it's i mean you it could whole, you, i think you could do a whole podcast episode on the uses of that word that would be fun mm. that would be fun i'll see how many complaints i get <laughs> from my listeners about all the swearing in this one and and decide whether yeah. or not to go down that road i thought about a sweary one once yeah because swearing you know it's it's fucking fun yeah um and every, fucking love yeah, swearing and it, it's again i think a very normal part of conversation mm -hmm. um so especially if you're with a group um especially native speakers um then i think yeah it's a natural thing that you're going to hear lots lots of swearing yeah yeah you need to be able to at least understand it mm. it's a personal choice if you want to use yeah. it or not but you you will you will hear it so you, you should be able to exactly get used to it yeah um cool moving on to the next one uh are we fuck? I'm going to keep using that mm. over time now. Um, it's actually a couple of phrases later. In our defense, this was before Wikipedia and broadband internet existed, so it was a bit more difficult. Still, we were idiots. Mm. Still. Yeah. Still, we were idiots. Yeah, that's a good I, one. What does that I, mean? I wanted to highlight that one because um, obviously people normally consider still was, for example, uh, I still haven't graduated i don't know something like that mm -hmm. yeah um yeah. whilst in this context I'm it's a still bit, here um different to me like nevertheless like all the same mm -hmm. um we um we decided to go so even though we hadn't done that we we still decided to go yeah so yeah yeah so still we were idiots mm -hmm. um yeah it's late still i want to go and get this done yeah exactly you know, like anyway or nonetheless yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to skip a couple because I think some of them are, are pretty straightforward. Okay. Uh, jet lagged. Mm. That's a nice phrase. Yeah. Jet lagged. Uh, let's check it in context. 
Yeah, we were very tired when we landed because the flight to Lon- from London was 12 hours long. Plus, there was the time difference, so we were a bit jet-lagged. Mm. So, so yeah, that's obviously when you travel to uh, another country in a different time zone and there's a big time difference, your body needs time to adapt to that. So if I remember, uh, we were waking up. I can't remember what the time difference is now, but we were waking up at like three o'clock in the morning because three o'clock in the morning mm. was actually like nine o'clock in the morning for us. Right. Um, yeah, and then like your natural lag. body clock, body clock, like thinks right, it's time to wake up now, but it wasn't. And it was three o'clock in the morning. Mm. Um, so yeah, we, we suffered um, with that for quite a few days. People often suffer when they come home as well. Cause it, it's, it's the same because then for example, we went to Thailand that time for a month and then your body, clock obviously gets used to that time and then you Mm -hmm. move again um Mm -hmm. i always find the best way to get over then you have to work (laughs) yeah exactly in fact that's the problem coming back because the best way to get over jet lag i often think is just to drink and then you kind of like pass out and sleep (laughs) Um, just make sure you pass out at the right time yeah exactly (laughs) yeah um so yeah that's that i heard also that a good a good cure for jet lag is um uh, do, doing meals because your body responds to like the three meal a day thing very well. So if you even no matter how hungry you are, wait until it's breakfast time before the next breakfast. Right. So you kind of like starve yourself, and then when you have breakfast, your body kind of kicks in. It's like okay, it's breakfast time. Right. That's an interesting. One. Apparently that helps too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not as fun as drinking too much, <laughs> but. <laughs> it's more useful when you have to go back to work because you don't want to go to work. Yeah, for example, after drinking, or if you just don't fancy getting wrecked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, when you're so tired. Yeah, uh, yeah, jet lagged. Uh, good fun. After shave, good stuff. Uh, used to love it when I was a nineteen same, too. Same. I used um, to put so much of it on because I think yeah. the thought process was, oh, I'm going to smell great. The girls are going to love me. But what what really mm. I think was the case is the girls are thinking, oh my god, he's put like a whole bottle of aftershave on. <laughs> he stinks. <laughs> I don't want to go near him. Um, so it's a strange phenomenon, isn't it? We just make up, put all these chemicals. Yeah. Like I'm going to smell of some chemicals today. <laughs> like and and then I'm I might I might get lucky. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, in fact, I literally don't use it at all now. In fact, sometimes my wife says to me, why? why don't you use it and i just i just don't like it i don't like smelling of chemicals um me too yeah when you when you walk past someone and yeah. they, they stink of yeah other 19 year olds <laughs> exactly it's like ugh, yeah yeah so aftershave yeah um utter i really like this word utter mm. it doesn't get taught enough you don't see this word in books very often no, you do don't. you but it's yeah. really common it's a complete and utter shame mm. that utter isn't uh, taught so yeah how would you define utter yeah i've tried, i've written here complete um mm. so yeah i'm not sure if that's probably the best definition but yeah i mean yeah i think so um often you yeah. like you actually just used them before they often get used together mm-hmm. like complete utter mm-hmm. silence some, something like that yeah because it's just like reinforcing the the one before it's a it's a binomial i think yeah or it's at least a common collocation yeah yeah a complete and utter disaster mm. or complete and utter nonsense yeah. or yeah complete and utter is a it's a common thing exactly yeah but yeah it just means just means very mm, doesn't yeah it? Or like yeah that's a good one totally yeah totally yeah yeah absolutely All yeah good ones, yeah yeah oh, i didn't use the context there um i think we i said utter silence because when we walked into the bar i think it there was utter silence mm, which utter silence, which was a strange yeah. thing because it was a bar and it was just so weird walking in and seeing that scene Oh yeah, and was it silent because um, everyone stopped talking when you went yeah, in? Yeah, exactly. Or was that. it just exactly a place that. where no one was talking? Well, anyway? there, there was there was no one there except the girls. So there was the group mm. of these girls, and they were talking sort of like amongst themselves. And then we walked mm. in. They stopped talking. So it's like do you know that when you're walking, like you can hear your feet mm. like walk, and it's just like, oh my god, what is it's this? It's like it's like. In movies, the jukebox is playing, and then when you walk, it's just zip. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was kind of, nothing's on. Exactly, it's kind of like that. Um, I had that once uh, in England, weirdly enough, mm. but it was the the late nineties, and uh, I was in very rural Devon, and right. um, I was uh, with my, my my partner at the time, and and we walked into this uh, pub, and I, I was a bit of an alternative kid, you know, I was mm. sort of quite gothic 
and uh yeah as soon as i walked into this this countryside pub in devon it was just zip yeah so yeah i know this feeling yes <laughs> but no one tried to sell me a wife on that occasion <laughs> <laughs> so yeah okay cool um more 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 on the flip side i like this a lot mm. On the flip side, what does it mean? Um, I'm trying to think. So, like, I've written here. So, looking at the other side of the argument. So, like, on, yeah, on the other side, I suppose. So, often use it for, like, the bad and the mm-hmm. good. So, I think in the, the story, that's what I used it as well to say something was bad. But on the flip side, I think I said there were a lot of girls in the bar. Um, so, because it was all a bit strange, didn't look very good, that was all bad. But on the flip side, so on the good side there were a lot of girls there it's kind of like on the other hand but i think Mm. it usually goes from negative to positive um yeah you you don't usually say it's usually can you say like on the flip side it's really bad like it's 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 usually a kind of optimistic turn isn't it you can get from positive to negative yeah i think yeah mainly from negative to positive yeah it feels like that yeah Yeah. it's like a little optimistic phrase a flourish exactly yeah I like it a lot. Um, and I use it. I use that one. It's, mm. it's in my lexicus. Um, I'm going to skip a couple. Uh, yeah, I'll do you a good price. I really like that phrase. Mm. I'll do you a good price instead of like, you know, offer or give. Yeah. Um, it sounds it sounds sleazy, doesn't it? When someone says, I'll do you a good price, they you, you wouldn't trust them, <laughs> right? <laughs> Especially when they're selling you a wife. Um, yeah, yeah. So, although to be fair, there are some already some red flags. Yeah, I mean, that. yeah. If, <laughs> in context, if he hadn't used that phrase, maybe I, I would have, you know, I, mm. I, I would have, I would have bought one. I'm not sure, but <laughs> considered the purchase of a it life was, partner. It was just that yeah. phrase which put me off. Um, <laughs> Do you a good price for this woman? So, uh, yeah. but yeah, it's a like, yeah, exactly that. Actually, like you said, that's the type of thing you think about when mm. you're like like on a beach in Europe and one of those guys are trying to sell you like some towels or something Mm. like that. Does that happen in in beaches in Europe? People try to sell you towels here all the time, all the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'll do you a good price. Mm. Yeah. I just like that collocation. Mm. Yeah. Do a price. Um, Some key vocabulary here for, for some uh, real world English Uh, pimp. Okay. It's such a it's such an innocent looking word, isn't it? Yeah, pimp. It seems cute or something, but it's not. It's, it's really not. Well, no. What's a pimp? Um, so yeah, I've, I've written here a man who controls prostitutes and arranges clients for them. Um, <laughs> I've, I've never really. <laughs> That's un- a good definition. Yeah, I've never actually. really understood yeah. this concept to be honest, because mm. um, yeah, like you kind of r- read stuff about it, like they have all the control over these people. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously a serious thing. Um, mm, mm-hmm. But yeah, so it's all a bit strange. Um, yeah, being quite naive, I often wonder the same thing. It's mm. like, why don't they just work for themselves yeah, well, yeah, exactly. if they're going to do that? A good business um, going on. <laughs> instead of these abusive people. <laughs> yeah, um, or just leave. Yeah. Or just like say, right, okay, well, I don't like you very much, so I'm just going to leave. Um, yeah, but I guess we're so far removed from this world like we have no idea yeah what goes on and yeah it's all rather dark but yeah you have this very simple like colorful not colorful but cute little word and it represents so many uh yeah so much sad dark stuff mm. and yeah. the, the other strange Hint. thing about that in america um sometimes it's considered i think a good thing when they say like oh he he he's like a pimp and they have like it, uh, Ooh, like uh, really yeah and it's yes yeah, not not very nice like, i've heard like on rap songs and stuff like this uh, maybe amongst like sort of macho cultures mm, yeah like, macho exactly. circles yeah so, so that's the, yeah. Not, the not nice thing about it you also yeah that is also that kind of sucks yeah. <laughs> i agree um but you also just remembered yeah you have this phrase pimp my uh pimp up something yeah pimp something so up. as a verb yeah like pimp my ride yeah it's like a tv program pimp my ride uh when Someone yeah. used to take like their car and they used to like pimp your ride, and then it used to like look well, supposedly cool, but uh, actually yeah. pretty terrible after. It's really weird, isn't it? I think it comes from a maybe I'm just totally guessing here, but like when you think of like a, a, a 70s cliche pimp, they always wore very sharp suits mm. and they always had very classy sort of they, they were like gentlemen, yeah. some sort of weird 
like underground gentleman. <laughs> um, and um, maybe it comes from that, from this sort of flamboyant yeah, I um, think so. stereotype. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. I, I never thought about that mm. before. Um, pour the drinks. That's okay. That's straightforward. Uh, come over is, is an interesting mm. one. I know it's such a simple little phrase. Um, the barman came over. Okay. Are you sure you don't want a girl? He asked, even for one night. So he came over. What does that mean? He came so, yeah, over. So, yeah, he moved towards us um, mm-hmm. and, like, stayed with us, let's say. Um, this size expression, I think, is most used for, like, your house, isn't it? So you say, like, come over. Yeah. Come over later. It's like come to my house later. Yeah. Why don't you come over after after work? Yeah, that kind of exactly. thing. Exactly. Or like, um, you can also have people over mm, as well if yeah. you're the host. You know, of course. I, yeah. I had uh, I had Eric and Martin over mm. uh, last last uh, last week. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. it's it's strange yeah. with the word over there, isn't it? To Mm. and it works with round yeah come well. round like, yeah come round or yeah go round come round for your house yeah in the situation Definitely. of the story like you i couldn't have said come ra- the barman came round because then it sounds like he came <laughs> to my house and i just want to underline i'm not you. friends with this barman and he just comes with a selection of, of potential wives <laughs> exactly. every time he visits yeah. you <laughs> Yeah, and you're like, no, I, I just want the conversation. I'm not, I'm not interested <laughs> in buying a wife. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of weird. Yeah, a little bit of a minefield there. Come over, come round. Mm. Both works for the houses. Come over, not come round. Only works for someone approaching you yeah, in a room exactly. or, or something yeah. like that. So yeah, yeah you can shout yeah. like, come over here, like if you're on the other side of a room, mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah, maybe it comes because we also have just the phrase over here mm. as well. So maybe these are connected. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, moving on, moving on. Uh, uh, here we go again. This is a good phrase. Here we go again. Oh, here we go. Sorry, um, I thought you were actually saying, like, oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize that was <laughs> yeah, the actual yeah, well, phrase. Context, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a good, it's a good phrase that you could actually throw into almost any situation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> here we so, go yeah, again. So, yeah, like, especially you, so, like, I've written here, so when something bad is happening again, of like, oh, God, here we go again. Mm-hmm. It's the same. So, yeah. in the story, it was the same thing. Literally, like I said, went to the second bar. I obviously didn't write the details again because it was exactly the same. Um, and it, exactly that. Something bad was happening again. So, we sort of, you know, looked up and just went, oh. Here we go again. Yeah, that feeling of like, yeah, you both know what's coming, what's yeah. happening. You don't need to say. You just say, "Here we go again." Yeah, we all know exactly. Yeah, yeah. and it's it's always like it's quite a funny phrase to use when um, you got like your friend who I don't know, who's always talking about how expensive shoes are, and he's got this thing, and he's always going on oh, that's another good phrase going on about it he's always talking about it all the time yeah. and then you know you're sitting with some other friends and he starts talking about shoes and you can just say oh god here we go again he's talking about the price of shoes again <laughs> yeah absolutely barry will never learn yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no i like that phrase yeah here we go again um cool soak up that's a good phrase all mm-hmm. that see if i can find the context again um I've completely I said lost that, everything um it was all there were all Thai people mm-hmm. but that was okay because we wanted to soak up the local culture or something like that mm-hmm. yeah yeah we use it with phrases like culture and atmosphere yeah as exactly well. soak up the atmosphere yeah so what does it mean yeah to kind of like absorb it because um, it comes actually from mm-hmm. so if there's like from water on the floor you might mm-hmm. like put something over that to like soak up the water and in the same way, if you like soak up like the atmosphere or the like local culture, it's like you kind of absorb it mm. into you. Let's say, <laughs> yeah, that's good. And also, do you do you soak up the sun when you're when you're sunbathing? Do you, do we ever say that? Yeah, you can so, so, soak up. Sounds familiar. Yeah, soak up the sun. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. You can say that. Yeah, yeah. To take it in. Yeah, to absorb it. Soak up the culture. Soak up the sun. Um, I liked also that you pointed out in the vocabulary this phrase get in because mm. it seems so simple but it's actually it's not obvious unless you know like to get in to the nightclub yeah um, and that is cost well, 10 pounds when certainly I was like 16 17 that was probably a phrase I used a lot because so obviously you have to be 18 to drink <laughs> in England um, and oh, the yeah, problem yeah. was every Friday trying to like get in the nightclub or like they didn't 
uh, on that that one. So you, often you would like call your friends out. I didn't get in. Did you get in? Mm-hmm. Did you get in? Yeah, yeah I remember the, this question. Yeah, it's like, oh, you won't believe it, but like, um, I know, like Sadiq got into uh, to Equinox <laughs> last night. It's like, whoa, no, but the bouncers are really, really strict at yeah. Equinox. Yeah, but he looks a bit old, right? Um, yeah, he got in. Yeah, um, we also use it for university as well. You, like, you know, yeah, he didn't, didn't get into uni. Didn't think about that. Yeah, she so, said, yeah, I, I got, I got in, uh, like to Oxford. Yeah. It's. I think it's really interesting because like go in and get in and go out and get out. Mm. They have this sort of major difference. And I think the difference is that there's it, it when you use get like to get into something or to get out of something, there's a sort of it's difficult mm. somehow. There's a challenge. There's an obstacle like getting into university. You know, you've got this exam in the yeah. way. Get into the nightclub. You've got this this bouncer <laughs> yeah. in the way get out is like it like escape it's not just leave yeah yeah it's a good point yeah. i hadn't thought about that yeah i've only recently kind of got those things together and just realized it's a bit an interesting little yeah quirk of english um yeah. i know we use that for the car as well mm. don't we get in and get out the car oh yeah that's um, true and i always think it's strange that for like transport like trains and buses we say like get on and get off so, so mm-hmm. you, but for the car it's get in get out it is difficult I heard getting a good in a theory car. about this. Like, okay, what's... Yeah, yeah, it's more of a challenge. Yeah. Um, but also, it's still with this get, right? So, like, maybe getting on a bus is still... There's maybe an obstacle. You've got to get it. You've mm. got to catch it at the right time. You've got to yeah. have the ticket. Um, the theory I heard, because you, you get in um, buses, trains, planes... Get on, get on yeah. Um, sorry, get on, yeah. excuse me. Yeah, get on buses, get on trains, get on planes. Usually, some people mix it a little, but generally speaking, mm. um, you get in, like, taxis and cars mm. one guy said to me once like if you're standing if you can stand up then you're on right and if you can't stand up then you're in okay i like that makes sense yeah kind of works and it also works with the mo- motorbike thing because you get on a bike right because you can yeah sure you can still stand on a bike yeah if you want of course yeah it's kind of cool mm. and i'm in i lived in turkey for a long time in istanbul and they have these things. I don't know if you have them in Sicily. Like they're called dolmishes. Uh, they're basically like eight seater kind of, like a like a big car, like an eight seater car with two rows mm. of, of chairs in the back. And what happens is they have a route, and um, you you queue up and you get in. And when the dolmish is full, when it, when eight people are in there, it moves. Not until then. So mm. either you have to queue and there's a flow and you're waiting for a dolmish, or sometimes you're waiting for people and you're sitting in the dolmish waiting for it to fill up. But it's sort of between a car and a bus, mm. and I I never really figured out whether you get in or whether you get <laughs> on a dolmish. And if you're quite short, you could stand in one of them. So, yeah, yeah, I, I'm still not so sure for any about listeners, that. Listeners, you'll have to. Mm-hmm. They will have to tell us. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us know. Do you get in or get on a dolmish? Um, anyway, yeah, get into the nightclub. Yeah. Um, have in mind. Have something in mind. Mm. Did you say it's not what we had in mind? That's usually the phrase, isn't it? It's not what we had in yeah, mind. Yeah, exactly. So it wasn't what we were thinking of, what I expected, I suppose, mm. as well. I guess it's, yeah, it's about expectations, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, a classic thing when you go on a holiday, maybe you've seen a picture of something mm-hmm. um or in fact again when we went down to the islands in this story we booked that in bangkok and they showed us for a picture of where we were staying and it looked mm-hmm. it was just like luxurious like beach apartment and when we mm-hmm. got there it was just a wooden hut on the beach <laughs> with no electricity Classic. and no water so yeah when we got there it wasn't what we had in mind that's what not that's what not what you had in mind what yeah we were expecting <laughs> yeah, yeah totally that's so familiar you get that with airbnb a lot yeah you get airbnbs uh that advertise um the rooms and you get the photos but they are, they're always using these wide angled mm. lens yeah you know, like making the room look twice as big yeah yeah and then you get there um, like, also oh. I, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it's just like one yeah. one room and the bathroom is part of the room um <laughs> that never happened but that was close yeah once um yeah yeah and also i'm thinking like you know when when you're 
making plans or something you're still making loose plans with someone you're talking about the weekend and you know someone says something like so are you around are you know are you around on friday night and you're like i'm not sure what do you have in mind mm, you know like, yeah, what do you have in mind what, what are you have thinking you got, of yeah yeah have you got any plans yeah. thinking of anything yeah yeah not what we had in mind and what have you got in mind these are the two phrases yeah, that yeah. jump out at yeah, me yeah definitely this phrase yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Strange looks. Get some strange looks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was? Uh, where were you getting strange looks in the in the story? Um, I think that was yeah in the sex show club. I'm not sure what the specific name of that place <laughs> is. There must be a proper name for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, again, walking in there was. Yeah, so we we got we got a lot of strange looks. Yeah, um, of people like saying, "What what are these two doing?" Yeah, here? yeah. You get yeah, getting strange looks. So that's um that's just everyone looking at you in uh, as if as if you were some sort of alien or something. Yeah, and that was that was very much mm. the case. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's the. Even thinking about this now, I'm I'm kind of getting a bit hot and sweaty just reliving the experience. <laughs> yeah, so intense it yeah. was. Yeah, getting strange looks, getting massages, mm. and and not to mention the live sex show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I I'm used to getting strange looks because um, well I, I I live I've lived most of my life in places where most people don't really look like me at all. Right. So I'm always. I'm always a foreign guy, right, okay. like wherever I am. Only when I come back to England or if I'm in like Western Europe, yeah, I I, I blend in a little. But yeah, I'm very tall. I'm very pink. <laughs> I have like white blonde hair. People people just know I'm a foreign. And I, I get strange looks. Yeah, most places I go to. Yeah, yeah. The, luckily here um, in Sicily, I don't because actually, so my grandparents were Italian. Mm-hmm. So I, I've kind mm-hmm. of I've kind of taken that Italian look. But some of my for like ex colleagues that I worked with in the school, were very much yeah like blonde like mm-hmm. and they used to get a lot of strange looks here in Sicily as well. I guess I guess it must really change your experience of a country mm, as well. Yeah, if you blend in and not, of course. I talked to Lisa, my partner Lisa from Lisa Miller from Clark and Miller, um, because she she kind of blends in wherever she is. Okay. She has quite a sort of neutral appearance. Yeah, um, even in Turkey people thought she might be Turkish. Um, wow. Um, and mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, speak, speaking of this, when that month in Thailand, um, so I spent a lot of time at the beach and, and I had such a suntan that at one point someone asked me if I was, if I was Thai um, because, oh, wow. because I was so dark. <laughs> and they, they said to me, are you Thai? And uh, I was like, no. Uh, but yeah, I had a, result <laughs> uh, yeah so I, I managed to blend in there as That's well in the end and so then i got less strange looks wow. after that mm-hmm. yeah wow that's a that's a successful tan mm. isn't it yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> if you can blend in in thailand i think i was again being 19 thinking like the more tanned i am maybe the more sexy i am mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, that's another strange one i never got that one either yeah why, why people really like tanning yeah i mean i, I mean now I don't understand it. I look fine. back and think, what mind. what was I doing? But um, at the time, <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, the brown are the better. Um, mm. But yeah, well, that's that's cool. Um, yeah, I guess it's kind of fun just seeing what your body can do, right? Mm. Like if I sit in the sun with this stuff on my skin for a certain amount of time, I change color. Yeah, that's kind of mad. Like, yeah, yeah. and it's very strange. Well, when you like, go to the toilet and then obviously like, well, or shower. And you've got that bit of like your bum mm. and your private parts that are completely white. Ah, the the naughty white, the naughty white bits. Yeah, exactly. I think I've heard them referred to. Yeah, that's a bit strange. Mm-hmm. Mm. That must be strange. Yeah, like looking at your body and just seeing a different body yeah. than you're used to seeing. Very strange. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like growing a beard. You know, I tried it once. I was a complete failure, but I had to try just to see what my body did yeah. if I left it alone. <laughs> Um, I looked awful. I looked awful. Um, yeah, moving on. Uh, this is another great phrase. Grin and bear it. Mm. Grin and bear it. Like yeah. bear, this is the same bear as bear with me, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. Um, so what does it mean, grin and bear? Also, it? like you're like grin as well is kind of like a smile. Let's say, um, or I think often like a sometimes anyway, like a forced smile. So it can be, can't yeah. it? Yeah. So that's that's the kind of thing here. So like a forced smile, and just sort of just get on with it. So I've written here when you find a situation difficult or unpleasant, but you don't say anything. There's nothing you can do. So you just to be polite, you just kind just, of smile and just think like, like is this going to finish? It's got a yeah, grin and bear it. Yeah, it's just putting up with it. It's got um, it's got a feeling of that keep calm and carry on. Yeah, sentiment hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, e- exactly like that. Just smile and tolerate. Yeah, yeah, I smile guess. and tolerate. That's a perfect way grin and bear. to describe it. Yeah, smile and tolerate. yeah, yeah, yeah. It also, whenever I hear this phrase, I can't help thinking of a song. I don't know. I'm going to test your knowledge. Your your well, what sort of music you're into? But does the song come to mind when you when you hear this phrase? Green and bear it. No, I'm going to have to say no to that. Uh, are you are you a Blur fan? I I was an Oasis fan. That's probably why. Oh, you're on the wrong side. Oh no, um, <laughs> immortal but, but enemies. No, but you must like, stop in, the podcast immediately. In the '90s, <laughs> because of the whole thing, and I was very young. I was very much like, no, I don't like Blur because I'm an Oasis fan. I mean, I was mm-hmm. like 11 mm-hmm. or 12. But um, <laughs> since though, I do, I do actually like Blur, but obviously not enough to know this song. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's not really a particularly famous song. Uh, it's on the Park Life album. And I might as well just grin and bear it. Okay. That's, uh, my that's my favourite Blur I, song is Boys and Girls. That's a great. That's song. a great tune. Yeah. Great tune. Yeah. That was a good album. It was they they really managed to do like pop. Like really kind of accessible commercial pop stuff mm. very well in that album. Yeah, yeah, great album. Um that and good song. Cool. Mm. Oasis, yeah, not so sure. I did actually secretly like some Oasis songs, but I didn't let anyone know right. that yeah, I was see, listening that was to them. S- similar kind of I was the opposite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you were secretly you were you were a secret blur listener. Uh, well, back then probably not some, but there were a few that, that I liked. Um but whilst now um, they're obviously quite a few but yeah the, the, even the few I liked I didn't want to admit that I liked them back then mm. because it was such yeah. a big thing <laughs> yeah I was the same about Oasis yeah. um, they were the enemy and they should not be liked even though the songs are actually not bad at all they're quite good yeah <laughs> yeah cool right uh, last one on the on the list we've got this uh, going at it <laughs> um this is, um, pardon the pun, uh, the climax of yeah. the story, this phrase appears. In. Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, absolutely. Yes, going at it is a very, very <laughs> informal way to basically say uh, have sex. Um, mm-hmm. And <laughs> yes, and that, that's... So yeah, I was watching two people like literally going at it um, and it being sex, going obviously. Going at it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, it is used a lot to mean to mean things like sex. Mm. Um, to be fair, going at it is very informal, but it's 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 certainly not the rudest way we can talk about having sex. No, it's not. But it is. I. It just seems to me a very vulgar. Like it's. It does feel wrong. Yeah, doesn't it just it, doesn't. Somehow, it's just not a nice way it. to describe it. Um, I think it. It, yeah, it feels it cheapens it, doesn't it? It makes it feel really cheap and and yeah. it, you know, it's dismissive. It, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, it's definitely de- definitely not a nice way to to describe it. But um, well, I, I I think the perfect way to describe what they were doing, because like I said, there was nothing romantic about what they were doing. It was mm-hmm. very much like they were at work. This was their job. <laughs> it was like when I worked at a supermarket mm-hmm. when I was 16 and like customers always said, like, why don't you smile? And I would always think because I've mm-hmm. had about three hours sleep and I've now been sitting on this till for the last eight hours. That's why it's kind of like the same face. Yeah, that, fair enough. That this guy had. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably his like his fourth performance of the evening. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it loses its charm quick, I bet. 
Um, yeah, so yeah, going at it, that's quite good. It's the right phrase because it feels like work. It feels like mm. a, a sort of slog. Um, while we're on words and phrases to mean have sex, I, I've always enjoyed the one that the British tabloid press uh, are very fond of. I don't know if they still do it, but um, you only find it in, in British, like, cheap, you know, low brown newspapers like the sun and it's the word romp okay, it's this yeah. word romp <laughs> you know like two celebrities were caught romping in hyde park um I never thought about that but it's true <laughs> papers do love that never, word yeah 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 romp it's i mean it's great i love it it's kind of it, it's got a sense of humor um and it always implies that the people are being caught. It does. As well, I don't know yeah. why. When so, when you're when when you're romping, it kind of means someone's <laughs> caught you. <laughs> it does. I wasn't expecting that when you word. said that. I was thinking I, I sort of ran a couple through my mind, but yeah, romp mm-hmm. wasn't one of them. Um, and that 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 is a great word. Yeah. It's so it's a cool word. Let's make that the word of the podcast. Yeah. Romp. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there are some fun fun ones. I, I also like the word bonk. Like he's bonk. bonking. Yeah. It's like a kid's word. <laughs> there's there's one. I think this is more of an like, American one, to be honest, which is the word. Mm. <laughs> well, I think, yeah, I, it's the word like Roger, like to, to, to like ah. Roger someone. Which <laughs> to Roger someone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that That's came pretty... from. And if your name is Roger, uh, like, you know, you. I'd imagine mm. you're not fond of that. Yeah, that reminds me of a joke I saw on a sign. Um, maybe some of the advanced listeners are going to get this. Um, Viagra, uh, it won't make you James Bond, but it will make you Roger Moore. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah, make you Roger Moore, yeah, Roger Moore's name. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's really quite good. a good one. Yeah, <laughs> that is really good. Whoever wrote that, I mean, that that's amazing. Yeah, it was just a cafe as well. They just decided to put that on the blackboard outside the cafe. Oh, right. Were they selling Viagra in <laughs> the cafe? Or? I, don't, I don't think so. I didn't check, actually, but <laughs> yeah, um, it was just a cafe. I think someone just thought it was funny and put it up. Yeah, I like that. I might yeah. actually steal that as well. It's a good one. Yeah, yeah. it's stealable. Yeah. I think they didn't t- patent it. Great. Well, cool. I don't have uh, anything to add, really. Like, that was really cool. And I really like the uh, exploration of, of the vocabulary here because, you know, vocabulary isn't just it doesn't stand alone. You need lots of examples to mm. um, to bring it to life. And I think I think you did a really good job of that. Thanks. Um yeah. Do you have any comments or questions or complaints about <laughs> uh, like the story or anything that's happened so far? No, I've had a great time. Um it's been yeah, it's been nice it's really like revisiting like that story and having a chat about it um mm. yeah and i'm gonna take this opportunity to plug the book as we say there are lots of other yep. of these kind of stories in the book if anyone's interested yeah um I, I don't really do anything with the book um i i almost forgot i even had the book but um if anyone's interested in reading a few more of these stories with some nice vocab then english on the toilet yeah english on the toilet There's a f- and you can find it it's on amazon yeah you can get it on amazon on amazon is there is there a non-amazon way of getting it well i've just because a lot of people don't like buying from amazon oh right okay yeah of course yeah. no there's not there should be though shouldn't there i should think about that um okay I sh- well for the time being yeah get it yeah it's all it's available english on the toilet i think it's the only book called english on the I, toilet I imagine so. so yeah <laughs> Yeah, there's some great titles. I'm just looking at the titles of the other stories. You've got one called Day at the Pub, Tattoo on the Bum. Yeah. <laughs> Eggs are dangerous. Ooh, you've got the C word. My name is Cunt, can I help you? Okay, that's a good one, that is, yeah. <laughs> Super Mario, Super Close. Uh, sex at a Funeral. Mm. That that one, the title is misleading there. That's, it's just the classic, the t- putting an interesting title to, to pull you in. Both of those things are mentioned in the story, but it's not what you think. It's a clickbait title. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, watching porn with your nan. Oh, God, I think that yeah. is the opposite because that actually happened. Yeah, that, I forgot <laughs> about that one. Yeah, that must have been very difficult to survive. Um I think this was my other favourite one. So you want the disgusting one? Okay, yeah, that's that's a that's a good one. Yeah, that's probably the most recent. Yeah. I think that was, yeah, retail nightmare. Mm, yeah, 
Yeah, that was an experience in the Disney store. Yeah, that was... But no spoilers. Let's... That, that was mm. here, oh, actually, gone. Sorry. In, in Sicily, yeah. Oh, really? Mm. <laughs> Ooh. So did, did this actually happen in English or in Italian? No, it happened in Italian. I, I translated this, let's say. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that makes it more vivid, I think. I'm going to enjoy looking at it again. Yeah. Uh, so you want the disgusting one. Going to prison for a plate of pasta. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I think that's it. Yeah. So, yeah, loads of really cool stories, lots of weird and wonderful and stressful things mm. that um, <laughs> Martin went through in various points in his life. Um, and also, do you want to mention your podcast as well, um, since we're here? So, yeah, it's called uh, Rock and Roll English. It's So if you just type that into any of your podcast apps, then you'll find that there are lots of episodes or you can listen on my website, which is rockandrollenglish.com. But notice that's rock and roll, not yeah, rock, rock and. and roll. Yeah, rock like and. Like guns and roses, rock and yeah, roll. Like, yeah, fish and chips kind of thing. Yeah, Fish and chips, yeah. Great, yeah. And you've got over 200 episodes, right? Yeah, I think 200. I think I, I released an episode just yesterday. I think that was 235, I think. Wow, so, yeah. that's epic. Um, yeah, so loads of content there, loads of stuff to check out. Yeah, and then I have yeah. also my like paid area where I've actually got nearly mm-hmm. 700 episodes there. Mm. Oh, you've got premium content. Yeah, and there, there are nearly 700. Ah. I can't believe I've made nearly... So if I add the wow, two together, those, and the other, I've literally made like a 1,000 episodes. Yeah. My God, that's incredible. Mm. Well, great, prolific. Excellent. So much stuff to check out there. Um, yeah, meanwhile... Thanks so much for uh, for sharing the, the nightmare that was your first night in Thailand with us. No worries. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Great. Thanks a lot, mate. Cool. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, that was it. That was a lovely conversation with Martin about lots of swearing and lots of interesting... No, not just about the swearing. There's lots of stuff going on. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you are, are here waiting for the answers for the true and false questions, you're in luck because I just realized I forgot to give you the answers during the episode. So here we go. I'm going to go through the answers for the true and false comprehension questions. Um, Martin and Boom Boom did a lot of research about their trip before leaving. Obviously false. They did not research a thing. Uh, Two, Martin and Boom Boom expected something similar to places they had been before. And yes, I think this is true. Um, this, they, they had sort of uh, preconceptions about um, places uh, in England and, and places in Thailand and expected some similarities. Um, three, the hotel that they stayed in was expensive. Uh, false. It was very, very cheap for them. Four, the first bar was how they expected it to be. Um, not at all. Uh, they were expecting to see people dancing and, and tourists and things like that, and there were none. Five, they had a drink in the first bar because they didn't want to seem impolite. Yeah, very British, and it's true. Yeah, they they didn't want to seem rude, so they stayed. Even though, and we're moving on to number six, they did not feel safe in the bar. True, and they did not feel safe in the bar. Um, Goes to show how being polite can put you in some ridiculous situations. Number seven. They believed that the taxi driver had problems with English. And yes, the taxi driver told them that he had problems with English and they believed him, at least at the beginning. Number eight, they thought the last place would be good. Yeah, they were optimistic. Um, They thought because of the English uh, problem with the uh, taxi driver that they finally got the message across. It didn't happen. But yeah, they did think that, so it's true. Nine, they enjoyed the massage. False, they hated it. Number 10, the man was enjoying having sex with the woman. Again, false, he had a face like stone, apparently. Finally, number 11, Martin and Boom Boom were rude to the taxi driver at the end. And it is true, they were very rude to him. In fact, they swore, they swore at him. That's about as rude as you get. Okay, good. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got a lot out of it. I'm expecting one or two complaints, perhaps. We'll see how that goes. If you did enjoy it, do let me know. If you didn't enjoy it and you thought it was uh, a little too sweary, also let me know. Um, And yeah, I look forward to talking at you next time. Until then, ciao for now.